Hey guys, check out what I got in the mail today. It's a brand new hummingboard. This hummingboard is another competitor for the Raspberry Pi, so I thought what I'd do is a quick unboxing for you here and show you exactly what's inside. Uh, so first here, uh, we have what looks like it's going to be the hummingboard. So just put that to the side for one second. Uh, this, Oh, it's a power supply. So this, this unit comes with a power supply, uh, unlike the Raspberry Pi. Let's just have a quick look at it here. It is a five volt, two amp. And of course I'm in North America, so I've got a North American plug head on it, which is great. Uh, and here we've got the Hummingboard Series Quick User Guide. Uh, so just some instructions. On how to use it. Uh, first screen screenshot in there, it looks like that's running a version of Android. Uh, so this may be more Android based. This second picture here, it's uh, a layout of the, it's a layout of the hummingboard, but I'm trying to bring it close here. I don't know if you can tell that print is so small. It's actually, it's illegible. I'm, I'm wearing glasses. I mean, I wear glasses, but I have pretty good eyesight with my glasses on, and I can't quite read that. Indication LEDs. Well, that's pretty difficult. Uh, some other information uh, back here uh, about the different models, uh, which I may use as reference as I go through this video. So that's the end of the boxing stuff. Let's move on to the main feature. Here we go. Just a little bit of tape on some bubble wrap. There it is, a hummingboard. Uh, and according to the model number on the back, here we're looking at the I2EXW-310-D. All right, so let's start with a quick tour. Uh, starting at the power, and we'll work our way around uh, in this direction. So we've got the 5 volt power in there. Uh, this obviously is the side of the CPU and uh, cooling. We'll talk more about that soon. There's an HDMI. It's uh, HDMI 1.4. It also uh, it's 1080p, but it says it also supports 3D. Here we have some uh, GPIOs. Here we have the gigabit ethernet port. Here's two USB 2s. Okay, here we have a little, uh, a little switch uh, with a plus symbol on one side of it. It's not a switch actually, it's a, a little two prong connector. Hopefully you can see in there. Uh, and this says it's for battery. So uh, this might be an alternate way to power the, the board. Coming around the corner we have an infrared port. Now that's an interesting choice to have an infrared port on this board, uh, as was the case with the uh, Banana Pi, which I recently reviewed, uh, simply because this HDMI port on the other side includes the ability to uh, read TV input with the libcec. So it's unusual to have this here. Uh, this is a reset switch. Uh, although it's kind of an unusual location to have a reset switch on the opposite side of the board from uh, where it's typically powered. Um, that is an unusual thing. Here we have analog audio, but I'm told that this is actually a high quality uh, analog audio. It also includes a mic in, and it may even, uh, I'll have to check on this, but it may even support optical out. Can't quite see if it does, if it does there, but, uh, I will have a look into that. Uh, this is your uh, SPDIF TV output, and of course, your uh, GPIOs. Now, as we come back around the front here, there's a very thin top bar there, and that's the LVDS. Let's just look on the back side here. Here we have uh, a micro SD card, which they've included for me. We also have this, which is an MSATA port on the uh, on the back. So 
can see that. That M SATA, obviously, this is uh, this is one of the holes to help tie down your M SATA. Uh, right on the other side of the board, just talking about unusual connections. There we have uh, the PCIe Mini, which is uh, unusual for this type of board. Again, uh, not available on the others. Uh, this is your uh, camera connector, and of course, the big thing. This is the heat sink that's covering up the CPUs. Now, this heat sink, I understand that these uh, the chips on this are upgradable, so we'll be able to replace it at a later date and put in faster chips. Uh, but this is currently running a two core, a dual core, one gigahertz chip. Now I see that there's screws there. You know, I may just get in under this heat sink. Um, let's just have a quick, quick look at what's under there. Just grab the screwdriver here. All right, let's have a look uh, underneath. There we go. Just letting it come into focus. Okay, well, there we have some. Uh, this under here is the uh, CPU. That's just some uh, paste to help uh, conduct the uh, heat sink. I just dropped the heat sink there. So obviously, this connector. Uh, tells the CPU what temperature the heat sink is at so it will know better what temperature to run at. But the indication that this has is that this thing runs hot. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't have bothered including it. So I'm interested to find out exactly how hot it runs, and I'll do that as a little test uh, shortly. Uh, other than that, we can see that the uh, sticker there, the i2 Rev02 sticker, that's covering the two RAM modules. And it's difficult to tell exactly uh, what else is on this. Just gonna have a just gonna have a closer look off camera. Okay, guys. Well, I've just had a look, and this chip in the corner here is the Azure Wave NH660, uh, which is a Wi-Fi module which tells us that actually this wire isn't a temperature sensor at all, but it's a radio wire uh, to extend the Wi-Fi's range, and it's using the heat sink to do that, uh, which is a pretty major advance if this thing actually has a Wi-Fi to it. It would be the first of these small computers to have Wi-Fi already built into it, and uh, I think that's a great idea if that's, if that's the case. So uh, I'll, I'll turn this on in a few minutes, and we'll have a quick check, but... Uh, but there you have it. Underneath this heatsink, it looks like we found a couple of surprises. All right, well, enough of that. Let's uh, put it back together and uh, get this thing going. Okay, one last thing to check. This claims to be a drop-in solution for the Raspberry Pi. Now, I know that the Model B Plus has already been released, but I just wanted to show you some of my Model B cases and just talk about uh, why I'm not sure that this is actually true. Uh, this is a, a half case for the Raspberry Pi Model B, uh, so you can tell that that's never going to work. It won't fit over the heat sink. Now, this case is a, a standard case for the Raspberry Pi, and if you if you look at the comparison of the Raspberry Pi and this, it looks like this might fit. One thing that does concern me, however, is the big bump on the bottom for the M SATA. So what I thought I'd do is actually test it out. So let's see if the humming board actually fits inside a Raspberry Pi case. Okay, so there you have it. It 
quite clearly does not. That will not fit in that portion there. It is too tall. The MSATA connector is just too darn tall to fit in there. Now, I could, uh, could run the case uh, without the bottom. As I'm trying to do now, just have to. There you go. I, like I say, you you could run the case without the bottom. Uh, I suppose, but that's just happens to be this type of case. I just wouldn't be sure that any of my Raspberry Pi just cases just automatically fit this. Also, this one has an opening lid, and there's no way I can do that without pushing on the heat sink. So, uh kind of fits. That's the best I can say. If you're going to run it without a bottom, you might as well run it without a top. If you're going to run it without a top, you might as well just run it without a case. So let's pop this out of here and uh, get on to some more fun testing. Hey, we have some activity. Uh, launcher or Google search launcher? Uh, let's try launcher. Just once. Okay, so as is common with, uh, with a lot of these devices uh, on my TV, uh, you can see that there's clipping happening in this top corner. It's a bit of a shame. Uh, touch the circle to see all of your apps. So this is obviously running Android. Uh, okay, wish there was a way to skip out of this. Let's uh, drag this down. Or not. Uh, so we're looking at Android version 4.4.2. Um, this looks like it's the model number QBox I, and I just wanted to tell you something uh, special that I discovered on the internet about the specific model number that this this one has. Uh, I told you it was uh, it was as written on the back here the model. I2EXW310, and I looked that up, and, and that model actually only exists as a cue box. So it's unusual that I've got this as a hummingboard, uh, to be honest. It's not listed on their website as a hummingboard. I can't seem to find any reference to it anywhere. Uh, but here I am. So I might just have a... Uh, to check here is does this actually have Wi-Fi it does have Wi-Fi okay that's pretty cool um, so that tells me that I was correct about that Azure chip um, and this thing has Wi-Fi now unfortunately uh, Android is a very limited use for me uh, I can't imagine uh, going much beyond this screen with it to be honest uh, I'll probably switch over to a Linux-based operating system. But again, now we can tell uh, that it has Wi-Fi, uh, that it does run, it runs an operating system, uh, and that's all cool news to have. Again, I'm not really happy with the uh, overscan. Uh, there's no ability to fix it after a quick squiz around in the menus. Uh, I might have a quick look online uh, and just give you an update if I find one. Uh, but for now, it looks as though this is as far as I'm going to go with this current system. Okay, guys, so this has been running for about the last eight minutes or so. And uh, I just wanted you to know, uh, I have a, uh, a thermal gauge here. Uh, I'm just going to check out the temperature of the heatsink. 
And uh, just looking in Celsius, uh, it's registering around uh, 30, 33 Celsius, which uh, is a very respectable number. I don't know if you can quite see that. That's just the gun there. Uh, 33 Celsius is very respectable uh, after 10 minutes of running. Obviously, Android isn't really testing the system, probably not testing the dual core, uh, at least not in this base configuration. Lots more to test with this board. I'll let you know how I go. Uh, please do check back for any further information on it. Uh, if you're watching this well in the future, you'll see a list of Hummingboard projects that I have available to check out. Uh, of course, you can always check out my Raspberry Pi videos or my Banana Pi videos if you're interested in that as well. And uh, look forward to soon seeing a Raspberry Pi versus Banana Pi versus Hummingboard showdown. And we'll see how they all go together. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget you can buy me a coffee in the About section below. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. And of course, tell me about any projects that you guys are up to. I'm always interested to hear and uh, find out about the amazing things you guys might have used. Uh, these humming boards or the other small electronics, Linux-based boards. It really is amazing that there's more than one available now on the market. And, uh, you know, we are spoiled for choice. It's a good time to enjoy that and let us know exactly what you're up to with these things. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Talk soon. Bye-bye.